the law of attraction, affirmations, there's a lot of talk around all of this. And the thing is, a lot of people try it out, but it doesn't always work so well. Uh, and what we want to get at is why that happens and and also give you give you a few ideas in terms of what might be getting you stuck and what uh, what else is possible. I'm Ravi Tangri and I'm here with Martin Lashkolnik. Uh, I'm in Canada, Martin's in Austria, and uh, we welcome you here. What we'd like to do is invite you to bring all your questions, all your comments, all your thoughts, uh, if, and frustrations if you've got, because I know a lot of people have played with the stuff and, and it's, it's hit or miss, right? And so bring your questions, bring your frustrations, bring your why isn't this working, blah, blah, blah. And we, we'd love to play with that. Martin, welcome aboard again. Thank you, Ravi. What a pleasure to be here. And yeah, let's see what, what we have got. I mean, as you said, uh, some people say law of attraction doesn't work. Who said so? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, also, I should mention, if you've got any questions, post them in the comments. And even if it's, you're looking at this, watching this recording after it's finished, we, we can still know if you've got questions popping up and we can respond to that. Uh, and we'd love to hear any comments or thoughts that you have. So maybe what we can do is start off and the basic how-tos, like what the heck it is. Do you, do you want to start with this martin because i know you yes. you've also uh been studied with jack canfield or, or, and his framework and his approach to this and and such so yes yes well there there are there are many frameworks i've i've been uh it was quite interesting i've been been following abraham kicks quite for a while and well i still do uh, mm -hmm. she has she has very very detailed very interesting stuff to it uh so there are, there are several approaches to it. The, the, the most basic approach, as we said in our last uh, broadcast already, uh, it's called karma. That's, that's what, in, what, in, what in Buddhism and Hinduism is called karma, the, the law of cause and effect. So if you behave like an a ass, then you'll get back like. So don't, don't worry. It, it will come back the way you send it out. The question is, and that's why we, we said we'll do this broadcast. So what can you actually do? So we are we're supposing that those people watching this uh, will have watched the other one before. So here we are now going into the how-tos and what's, what's actually happening. Right. The and previous one we looked at, um, does it really work? Is there any yeah. science? And there's actually a huge amount of scientific support for this. Exactly. And... Uh, as you said, there are so many people saying it doesn't work. Well, uh, let's. I'd like to rephrase that or expand it a little bit. It doesn't work the way they want. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't work. Right. So what what is then what is then the precondition for it not not working? Well, maybe before that, let's just let's let's just lay out what it's supposed to. Do. Like the basics is that you have a clear picture in mind of what you want and you infuse it with emotion right and right. it doesn't matter what the picture is or what the motion is what most people do is they focus on all the caca that is in their lives and they infuse it with fear or anger or frustration or upset and guess what they get more of exactly and and it's it's very it's it's a very reasonable approach Actually, if you if you if you look at it, uh, uh, because all the, the the beautiful things that happen to you, uh, they are nice, but the one bad thing that happens to you can cost you your life. So that's where, like from the Stone Ages on, we are conditioned on watching out where could be possibly be a danger. Uh, our lives, meanwhile, uh, consumer protection laws, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is you're less likely to, to, to lose your life. They even, I mean, nobody in their right mind uh, 150 years ago would have strung a rope around their legs and jump off a cliff, right? <laughs> now we do that for recreational purposes. Uh, because we have trust that the rope will hold and it, it's fun and the, the adre adrenaline rush and so on. 
But so when, when we talk about law of attraction now, how, what, how does it actually not work or why it's not working? So I, I always suggest have a look that what are you predominantly focused on? And not only rationally with your thoughts, because your thoughts are actually a very fleeting uh, thing. This is this is really, I mean, monkey mind is jumping from one from one thing to another. Oh, look, there's a squirrel, and uh, you know, it's going off 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 track all the time. So, what are you really focusing on every day? Is that what you're focusing on habitually, subconsciously? Uh, yeah. Yes. I, I was going to say that that this gets back to why what's really going on in here is it, it comes back to Carl Jung said that, that we've got three levels of mind, right? You've got your conscious mind, your subconscious or your unconscious mind and your superconscious mind. And people think we're the subconscious mind, but that's only seven chunks of information plus or minus two. That's it, right? That's it's, whatever the instant focus on. You're it's, it's minimal. Un- right? huh? It's minimal. It's minimal. And uh, that's that where your mind's bouncing around all different things. Your unconscious is where the tapes have been installed and are running on an endless loop. And the, the concept of the law of attraction is that the only way to contact the superconscious mind, which is if you want to call it the connection to spirit, to God, what, whatever is your frame of reference, um, is through the unconscious, through images that are planted in there, infused with emotions that run over and over. And you may think, you may create a goal, you may create a vision and focus on it five minutes a day, but 23 hours and 55 minutes of the day, your brain is going around in that endless loop of all the caca that you've created in the past. And so it's it's really like trying to take a teaspoon and empty a, a boat out of water that's, you know. Exactly. Filling up. And additionally, on top of this, um, then in those five minutes where you try to visualize the positive thing, then all the subconscious triggers are hitting you. You know, the, all the things that are uh, that you are having an association with. So you think of the perfect low life, you think of the perfect uh, job or uh, the abundance that you want to create in your life, whatever it is, but then, you remember that when you were five years old and your daddy got lucky and really got a promotion and made a lot of money, but suddenly he had to work a lot and within two years he died of a heart attack. So how likely will you be to go out and, and say, okay, well, I have a total positive uh, connotation with uh, having a great job and making a lot of money. No, you don't. So what I always ask yourself, what I always ask people is take inventory of what's going on. Uh, there's in the last last broadcast, I, I mentioned the, the self inventory sheet, the, the association sheet where you just write down quickly what, what are the words that come to mind when you think about work, when you think about love, when you think about wealth, when you think about health, or whatever it is that you, where you are not satisfied with in your life currently. And then, Look at those. Another look at those, and and those will probably most likely describe the way your life looks right now. Absolutely. So because this is the subconscious programming, this is your first impression that comes to the forefront of your mind when you think, okay, wealthy is well, wealthy is only for the cheaters and blah blah blah. What do I know? It's like, uh, and and then wealth corrupts. Absolutely, and yeah. and and all all these notions, and and plus all the the. Uh, you know, there, the spiritual notions or the, the relig- religious notions that were conveyed to us as a societal norm, uh, those are deep, deep, deeply ingrained. So, And also they're very distorted. Like one of the biggest ones is, I, I remember, we, I think you were at the National Speakers Association in San Diego when Randy Gage got up in the, yeah. <laughs> on front and he said, oh my Been God, there. he... He expected to be totally crucified for this, but he said that organized religion is one of the greatest causes of poverty. And and one of the things that that he said, the biggest, one of the biggest misconceptions is that that (coughs) everyone says that money is the root of evil. No, the Bible does not say that 
anywhere. It says desire for money is the root, and yet it's become money is the root of all evil is what everyone knows. And that's programmed in so many people. And this is actually quite interesting because we have a very similar thing in Buddhism, mm -hmm. where it also says the attachment to an outcome, an object, whatever, mm -hmm. is the problem. Not the, the, pro the, the, the thing is the thing. Money, money is, is just money. energy. Yeah. I mean, this is printed paper. Sorry. Like, you know, but the, the attachment to it. So I, I don't have enough. I need to be in a state of lack. Um, and then we have to think of, okay, uh, you want a, a wonderful love life. And yet you are feeling all the time miserable because you feel lonely. <laughs> Guess what you so, get more of. Exactly. Exactly. So now when we turn this around and we are so good in finding in finding what's not working, I don't want to be sick anymore, people say. Uh, well, so the first thing is, so this is this is to take away number one. The first thing is watch your language. And not in the classical sense, don't say the, the bad words, but what are you actually saying? And remember your subconscious only realizes images. It only can get a feeling, an image of something. It doesn't get abstract notions like negations and, and things like that. So right. if you so, say not sick, what is the image? If, if you have to sick. create an image of this, the image is sick. Yeah. So uh, that is where, where affirmations have a point in, when they are saying, okay, formally, put a positive formulation on a positive what, goal. So what yeah, do so you want, not what don't you want? What do you want? And and whenever you you and you will say okay I'm I'm but I'm running into all this stuff that I don't want yes excellent absolutely notice become clear and then say okay not only no, not I don't want that because that will bring you more but notice and say what do I want I want more of this so I, I would like to see a steady stream of income uh, from wonderful no sources in an in an in a fun way that allows me to express my, my highest, my best gifts for the highest good of all, or something like that. I mean, this, this is what was not very elaborate, but get, get a feeling out of this. So right, the feeling and what you want, the feeling and what you want. So, and if you say I am this or that, as it is usually said in affirmations also is uh, most likely then your subconscious will protest and say, I'm, but you're not. Yeah, the so, little voice on the shoulder that goes crap, crap, crap. Exactly. Yeah, and 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 it says it says then you are you're broke, you're done, you're a loser. And so, which of the two statements uh, has the higher credibility and the higher uh, emotionality? Of well, course, that voice the, the, is what's going here. on in your unconscious, and that's exactly. the the program that you've got to delete. You want to bring that up so you can delete it. And I'll so, show you a technique for that. So in, in that sense, it's really useful when you say, I am this or that, and then watch your internal reaction. Take stock, take inventory, and see what's coming up. Oh, is there, there is, there's this squeezy feeling in the stomach, or, or there's this, uh, you're getting heart palpitations, or you know, you have some kind of reaction, you have a repulsion, you have whatever it is, take note, and then this is a clear sign that this topic is not fully done yet that you're not at peace with it so and to turn this around um, I would suggest to to use formulations like wouldn't it feel great if <laughs> happens and then try to go into this feeling of how would that feel when when this actually happens so yeah. create the feeling because uh, you can, mo most people who are, who are proficient in this, in this work say, you've got to feel abundant first to experience abundance. You've got to feel love or loved first to experience the love outside and so on. So we have to, the, the feeling within the, the state that you are in is creating the state outside. Right. And everyone can, you know, the, a lot of people have challenging lives, but everyone can find something, even if it's, if it's a tidbit, that's a glimmer of that feeling somewhere, I think. Yeah. Most and can. and th that is the thing. Don't be informed by your past. Uh, the past is, uh, that's stored there. It's all there. Uh, 
take it just as an information as of what you don't want and find what you want. So, right, and right. then go into that and, and then don't say, I am abundant now because you are not. But how would it feel if you were abundant? Well, I'm good. Wouldn't I'm it, good. Wouldn't I feel, it feel differently good? with you with that, but, but we'll talk about that. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I mean, there, there are many different ways. The, the, yeah. the, the main thing is that we start reprogramming the subconscious mind. Uh, and one of the, the I, I think if you can't grasp uh, the feeling of, of abundance, then go, go through it, through the sentence, wouldn't it feel nice if so and so. Uh, and so on, yeah. Right. So and that's of course, one there, there, are, there are other. There's one technique. There, yeah. there are many other techniques. The, the question is, what state? If you do it, if you find your own technique, what, what state does it leave you afterwards in? Absolutely. Are you feeling? Are you feeling actually threatened, or are you feeling under pressure? And like, oh, look, I'm never going to manage this, and this is this is too much, and I can't do this. And or are are you in a state of delight? Are you in a state of Ah, oh, that interesting. That, that I, I think that would be nice. Let's go that way. Yeah, and so and another thing that I I want to I want to uh, bring up quickly is the thing of letting go. I think this is this is a huge thing that because so many people that I've been talking to in my seminars and and in coachings and so on they say, well you know I didn't believe anymore. I made all these affirmations and so, but I didn't believe anymore that it would happen. So I. I said, okay, crap, leave it alone. And lo and behold, short time later, it showed up. It happens, yeah. But, but it needed this moment of letting it go. And, and where, when we go back to the beginning, don't be attached to the outcome. Absolutely. Yeah, and but don't be attached another... to the thing that you want to have. And so that sounds letter. easy, but it's also really hard because, uh, and I've only a few years ago found out actually it's from a psychotherapist in Austria who created a new modality that, that, that uh, you know, because you're supposed to create this amazing image that you're so excited, you're passionate about, like you're drooling about it. And then you got to let it go. It's like, how the heck do you do that? So, but there is a way I'll show you. Um, so here's where I, I want to take. Uh, another way of looking at what you were talking about is um, when you said, uh, you know, uh, don't think of the past. Here's a way to find what's going on uh, in your head, what those unconscious patterns are. This is something that I do in my uh, the Reset Your GPS program. Like we all have an internal GPS, I say, that's got a default setting that keeps us right where we are. And it doesn't matter what your vision is. Until you delete that, and you, you, you can't replace it, right? And here's a simple way. Look at your life. What keeps showing up, right? What are the patterns? I mean, if you're, uh, you know, you may have more money than you did when you were younger, but are you still just as tight? Are you still just as pinched? Are you running into the same type of thimble brains at work? You may change jobs, you may move across the country, but the same turkeys are there. The type of personality, not the same person, but the type, you know, uh, if um, you run into the same, you know, wackadoodles dating, what, you know, all of this, one of the tough things to own is, I'm sorry, but everyone wants to blame them and get upset at them, but there's only one person at the scene of every crime. Sorry, right? And yeah. it's not to be blamed. It's not to feel guilty. It's it's to be re responsible, able to respond and realize you're the common factor. So the, what I've found for a lot of people is, you know, the life is not necessarily bad. It's just meh right it's just it's just it's not passion it's not joyful it's not all that they're wanting uh but they keep manifesting the same thing so that's how you can map what's going on in your unconscious is look around you and take a and look then, at your life don't beat up on yourself oh god no it's, no no that's an normal. awareness it's normal it's just finding out what is there and say okay uh, it can be different and it totally. will it we will turn that around and so the if if we think of what are, what is the emotion what is the feeling or what is uh, or no okay let's put it differently my deepest conviction is that the core energy of this universe is love mm -hmm. is love is joy is abundance is it's it's an overflowing bliss 
So when you go to this, and, and there are these old statements, follow your bliss and so on. Uh, yes, I think this is, when you look where your bliss is, A, you get an, you get an information uh, of what is actually your core purpose. Mm -hmm. Because if you try to manifest against your core purpose, against your soul purpose or your, your life's purpose, um, it will be very hard. It will be difficult. You, you'll run to obstacles. Maybe you'll manifest something and you'll lose it again. And then you say, okay, I got it. And, and this, all this stuff doesn't work. So this is something to really be in touch with who you really are. And you don't manifest for your, your mom's sake or for your dad's sake or for your brother's sake or for society or the teacher or the preacher or whoever. Yeah. But you manifest, is it really your own desire or is it a should? So cut out the shoulds. The shoulds are, are not helping you go anywhere. So yeah. this, I think this is, this is, this is also a, a very important thing. Are you shooting? And, and it's, our mind is so tricky. And, and, and I just recently noticed that, you know, I had the opportunity to test drive a new car and it was beautiful. And I caught myself finding like, oh, let's, let's see what the others think of me. <laughs> you know, it, it was just a moment, but I was like, hello, where did that come from? So there's still this little boy there wanting to be acknowledged by others. And that yeah. is perfectly all right and normal. Right. But, it's not beating yourself up. It's like, oh, okay. Now let's but, explore this. But realize that this small boy isn't there anymore. Mm -hmm. It's only there within you. And you, this is something that you have to make peace with you. The other piece, too, I think that that's really critical to, to be aware of that. But it's to be really honest. Because a lot of people rationalize it away. Yeah. Like one of the yeah. things that... Oh my God, I called a new age cop out, right? Uh, people are trying to, you know, they're, they're creating visions of, um, uh, you know, let's be honest, money allows experience. It's, 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 a, it's a utility. It creates a opportunity to do a lot of stuff in our world. It's energy. Um, and people are doing that and the, they're still in scarcity. They still don't have enough. And then you talk to them and go, oh, but I have an abundant life. I have abundant friendships. I have like bull droppings. You know, uh, you can't be a little bit abundant any more than you can be a little bit pregnant uh, or any other part of your life, right? It's you are or you're not. If you're not, then realize you're putting out the signal for that scarcity or whatever it is, the lack of the job, the lack of the relationship, all of that. And that's what's manifesting that. And it's not to feel guilty, not to blame, but it's to own it and say, okay, if I'm doing it, I can change it. Yeah. And I just recently did, did a, an interesting session with uh, a coach of mine and uh, we were working on a topic and she said, okay, now imagine that coming to you. And I was like going in this state of, of where I was quite relaxed and I was like observing like what, what is, what is, what is the, the physical and mental reaction when I feel that coming to me? Mm -hmm. And at the beginning, it was like... <laughs> because it wasn't normal. It, it wasn't normal. We are not yet used to this and this is okay. So in and, and, and that sense, it's, it's also useful for, um, you know, there are those, those um, I don't know what they're called in English, but where, where they say, okay, I'm, I'm getting better and better in every aspect every day. Or, oh, you know, every day say, in every way I'm getting better and better. Whichever it is. Uh, yeah. So and there is something to this to, because it allows you a gradual improvement. People have the feeling they have to jump from zero to 100 immediately. No, go from zero to five and be, be grateful about this. See what's there and say, oh, wow, see I, what happened. And this is great. Go into gratitude. Go into appreciation of this and lock this in. Yeah? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, this is in uh, business as well that, um, uh, you know, I think it was Motorola that they wanted to go to the number of errors, Six Sigma, which is like one error in 10 million or something, if I'm remembering right. And they knew that if they uh, just said, told their company, I mean, back then they were your typical American manufacturing organization that had like one defect in a hundred, right? So to say, we're gonna go to one in 10 million, people would say, 
never going to happen. Not going to. So they went first to one in 10,000, which was a huge leap. Hmm. Then they went to Six Sigma. And, uh, you know, so they, they, they made it, you know, like one of my mentors and coaches says that, 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 that you've got your goal. It shouldn't just be exciting. It's got to be, it's got to be exciting and also terrifying. When you got those, then you got the right goal. Yeah. Yeah. And, and another thing that just came to my mind is that uh, when you, how to put it? Um, blanking out. Sorry. Okay. No worries. Well, maybe <laughs> we can start to move towards like the ideas for affirmations and how we can, uh, you know, some of the ideas. And one of the wow. things that you said was instead of saying I am, to say, what was it? I choose. I choose. Well, because th this is because of, of, of little crap man here quacking. I like uh, that crap man, little cape. <laughs> <laughs> and so when you're saying, I am this or that, immediately the voice from here comes, oh, bullshit, this is nonsense. Uh, and so then, and you go into the emotion of this, as we said before. If you say, I choose to be abundant, or how would it feel to be abundant? Wouldn't it feel, be, wouldn't it feel good to be abundant? All of those things, these are choices. These are pot possibilities and potentialities. Uh, so all those are non-threatening to our subconscious. The, the, they cannot say, well, you're not that. Because you're not saying that. I, I choose to be healthy. I choose to be happy. And uh, when you do that, still the subconscious mind produces an image. And that image is healthy and that image is happy. And if you do that on a repeated basis, then... Uh, it, it might trigger something that, that, that is helpful for you. Of course, you can say, I am, if you don't feel any resistance to this. So here's where I'm going to differ with you, okay? I, I, I like to bring up what's that resistance. So this is a technique that I learned to, to surface that, to bring up that voice, is you just get a real high-tech tool here, a, a notepad. I, I really believe in high-tech. And what you do is you take a, a pen and you draw a line down the middle, okay? Then what you do is you grab a, a, you know, a pen and you write um, whatever is the, the affirmation you want. You could say, I, I earn you know, 10,000 a month with ease, okay? Whatever it is, it could be I, I'm in a loving, healthy relationship. It could be I, I love the job that I do, whatever. The first thing, like you said, the little crap man, first thing that pops into your head, whatever it is, you write it down on the right-hand side. Then you write down on the left-hand side, you write down your positive affirmation again. So, you know, I, uh, I, I am earning 10K a month with ease. That's never going to happen. Then you put, that's never going to happen. You put down a little crap man saying that. And what will happen is as you go down, you keep going down on the left-hand side, writing the, the positive affirmation. Because the thing is, affirmations work. But sometimes if you go, like, like you look at Think and Grow Rich, the classic book, Napoleon Hill, right? He, morning and night, he looked in the mirror and he said his affirmation 30 times. And, you know, it, it works. But sometimes these Old tapes are so strong. It's like attacking an iceberg with a toothpick, right? And I, this is for me bringing, a, bringing in heavy explosives into the heart of the iceberg, right? What's going to happen as you go down on the right-hand side, it's actually going to get nasty. Like sometimes you find that there's, you know, you're dropping F-bombs at you. Like you are so full of blah, blah, blah. And, and, and it's going to get nasty. But then something's going to happen. As you keep going, it will start to change. And then, you know, it might take one sheet. Most times it'll just take one sheet. Sometimes you might need to take two. I've never really seen it take more than that. 
and with me or my clients. But by the time you get through it, all of a sudden the right hand side is going to be in agreement. It may not say the exact same thing. It may, but it'll be congruent. So it's mm -hmm. like I'm earning, you know, whatever with ease, and it's, yeah, and it feels so good. And what yeah. that's telling you is you've actually taken that tape in your brain and recorded over it. Right. Right. And. I, I like a technique also I'm you know I'm a big believer and a big advocate of of energy psychology techniques like the meridian tapping or the mm -hmm. the, the TAT technique uh, these are a really great ways to release these internal talks to to make peace with those and and to take out uh, the emotional charge that are in there but now right. I remember what I wanted to say before please uh, it is it is really helpful, and whether it's an affirmation or not, but whatever you want to achieve, whatever the goal, whatever the vision is, uh, for most people, it's much easier to focus on what is the benefit for others than for themselves. Yeah, so for a lot of people. We, we did, we did uh, again and again, I do in my seminars, and, and uh, something I learned from Jack Canfield also, uh, we do muscle testing, you know, where mm -hmm. somebody pushes their arm down, and, and then we have people... Uh, stating a goal, like a big goal, as like as you said, the, the goal that's scary. Uh, and so imagine that you are you are re you are reaching that goal, and people are tested, and they are weak. And then I said, okay, take exactly the same goal, don't change anything, same goal, but imagine what positive will be brought into the world through reaching this goal. Not you are earning a hundred thousand dollars in commission from X Y Z, but how many people will have a better life uh, with that product, with those houses, with whatever it is that you're doing? And for, uh, imagine that, <clears throat> rock steady. So this is so this is this is this is because there is little me inside that I'm not worthy of this. It's yes. not about you. Bad news. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's not about you. It's about what you are here to bring into the world, and that's why I talked about soul purpose before as well. And this is one of my pet peeves with, I mean, the, there's a book called The Secret, most people know that has popularized this. And that's wonderful. My pet peeve with it is, you know, there, there's a law of reciprocity. You give and you receive, right? Hmm. Which is what you're speaking about. And that's never mentioned in the video of The Secret. And only once is it mentioned in, like there's a line in the book that drives me wacko, which says the universe is your catalog, pick out whatever. You know, that's just such a yeah. one way. It's get, get, get. Serve and receive. Serve and receive. There's, it, it is a two-way reciprocity. But, but there's something else underlying that. Yes, absolutely. But I think that, that there's another barrier in terms of the self-perception, the self-worth, is that we are abundant beings. And if you don't feel that you deserve that, you're not seeing yourself as you're naturally abundant. Yeah. And so that that's something else, again, not to beat up for, but to explore or connecting, yeah. right? And the, the, there is, there's one thing uh, that changes affirmations totally, which I, I learned from a guy called Wayne Dyer. He wrote a famous person. He wrote a book. Uh, one of his many, many books is "Mastering the Art of Manifestation," mm -hmm. and there he turns the affirmation actually around. He says, "Actually, the I am is uh, like in the old Aramaic, or or you know, when when Moses met the burning bush and God spoke to him, and he said, my name is I am that I am.'" So, and the way Wayne presented it then was that whenever you say I am, you are affirming, you're confirming your divine nature, a quality of your divine nature. So you're not talking about little me Martin here with the body and the pimple there and, and the a, a mosquito bite here. No, you're talking about your divine core. And when you say, I am brilliant, well, this is your divine core. Who is going to uh, deny you that? Yeah. If you and say, it's not I being egotistical. It's not being. Not at all. It, because there is 
and whether depending on on the on the school of thought there is a, either a spark a spark of god in you or you are god whichever way you want to see it uh, i don't mind whichever is yours but when you then so see whenever you're speaking i am you are uh speaking of this divine nature in you and so whenever you say i am an idiot you're insulting not only yourself the universe but the higher all yeah yeah. So therefore, therefore, with all good conscience, you can go out and say, "I am brilliant. I am beautiful. I am loved." Yes, you are to the core of your heart. You, you know that, that brings to me that quote by Rumi, right? You are not a drop. Uh, you're not a drop in the ocean. You are the ocean in a drop. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, the. <clears throat> So I think that all this is, is, I mean, it's a lifelong journey and it's more for us to explore that we are, you know, that, that if, if, if you have difficulty saying I am this and owning that, um, also another big thing is in terms of, you know, for the, there seems to be three main things that people are, are, are focused on health, abundance mm -hmm. and love. Right. And exactly. if, if you are, um, you know, Louise Hayes did some amazing work. She's the one I go to for, for health. And we've talked about abundance with love. If you're not finding that, then it's to look inside. And what are you loving yourself the way? Or are you beating mm -hmm. yourself up? Because if you're getting treated a certain way by others, and I know for me, because of stuff Kaka I went through, I isolated myself a lot of my life and I beat myself mm -hmm. up. And that's what I encountered in the world. Uh, yeah. and, and then once I realized, oh, this is what's happening in me. It's just a mirror. Then I can start mm. to shift and work on that. And all of a sudden, the world changes. Yeah. So and another, another aspect that I like to use, or the, that, is, that is another technique, um, realize that you don't have to do it on your own. You know? There's, uh, whether you call it universe. And you can't. And you can't, no. Uh, if, you, if you call it the angels or God or the universe or, or Buddha nature or, uh, you know, there are so many different ways. But imagine that, that, that let's say there's, there's all this, this, this divine supporters and helpers. They're lined up just waiting to be at your assistance. And you're standing there like this. No, 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 I got this. I got it. I got it in my control. I, I got that, yeah? The that's control freak. That that's exhausting, mm -hmm. and so let it go. Let let them do their job. I mean, let the synchronicities of life uh, work out the stuff that they they are good at. Because we don't have control over all this. So let it right. go. Right. Hand it over to a bigger, more powerful source. Be it source, be it universe, be it God, be it the angels, whoever. But you can. Not only it's not only a question whether they will help. So uh, saying, "Oh, please, please help! I'm in lack. I'm in need." That's actually not really helpful. No, it's what that okay. does is that manufactures more lack. Right, exactly. Or at least it it makes it harder to accept what's coming in, or that something is coming in. Uh, but when when you when you see that actually, well, whether it's a universe or God or whoever it is, they have the power. It's not a question about this. If you can, are clear with, with yourself that they got the power, they can do anything. There's no degree of magnitude in miracles, it says in the Course in Miracles. Uh, so then when it's already established, okay, they have the power to do that. Why not simply say, and I learned that from a, a Scottish angel medium called Carl Gray, he says, thank you, angels, for the solution for. Thank you for the clarity of. And what that does is, A, you delegate out what you want to achieve. So it's not anymore about you. And you also go to a place of gratitude. You go to a place of, of well-being, of well-feeling. And this is, this is really helpful also. To, so the, the most important thing is, uh, I think, approach life like the five-year-old boy in front of the Christmas tree. Wow, look at all that. And that's all for me. How is, isn't it amazing? And every little good thing that comes to you, come from that place of saying, oh, wow, this is really cool. Nice. Thank you. We are taking too much for granted. Right. right. And it's, 
the the thing is it's the gratitude is the magic ingredient if you can be if you can be grateful for something that has not manifested that is absolute faith totally yeah um now here's another thing about you you get this vision and what i mentioned about letting go there's a simple way to let go this comes from a modality called logosynthesis um is you do your vision you step in it you feel it you write it out in present tense that you're so excited and i do always start a vision with i am so happy and grateful now that boom mm. right the gratitude is there to feel that gratitude and if you haven't got it you can imagine it come on give me a break um but then when you finish that what you say to yourself this is a simple line is I retrieve all of my energy bound up in this vision and I take it to the right place in myself. That's it. I retrieve all of my energy bound up in this vision and I take it to the right place in myself because otherwise what can happen is you know you you get obsessed about the vision then you're looking at every detail in your life and you start noticing where it's not happening and at some point this is what's dangerous it flips and same with an affirmation and yeah. while you're saying the vision what the picture you've really got is it not happening and the frustration or, or, or the fear of it not happening and guess what you manifest it not happening yeah. Right. So it's to take that energy back and then you get on and live life. You know what you need to do. But here's the proof that 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 you can't do it all. Look back and you got the proof in your own life, whoever you are. You look back in your life. And any time you've accomplished something. Yes, you may have worked hard on it, but I will guarantee you there were people you encountered resources you connect with that that you never could have planned all these amazing little coincidences that happen that exactly. you never could have planned and that's the rest of the universe supporting you you just got to allow that in exactly and it's it's about well yes you got to do something but most people start doing on the outside instead of doing on the inside first and that's and, that would be my my closing recommendation uh, or i'd say being on the inside is a, is a process of well yeah by letting go of all those old triggers and those old traumas and so on this is something that you can do from within and then be that love be that gratitude be that that bliss uh and when you are that you become a magnet for all the good in the universe to come to you as well right and you right. can take your vision and you know that two column exercise I talked about, you can take each line of your vision one at a time and work it through and notice yeah. what's bubbles up and goes. And that's a part of deleting your old program. It takes time, but I'm, you know, what time's gonna pass whether yeah. you do it or not. Well, and what, 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 if I can add on to that, if you're writing down the negative that's coming up, like the, the resistance or the, the belief that's never gonna happen, then, uh, I'd strongly recommend do some tapping on this. Say, oh, this resistance, this resistance, this resistance, this resistance. I'm ne never going to get over it. This is too much. Yeah? So you don't have to really come up with an elaborate way of saying this, but just like what you just wrote down. I'm too stupid to make this happen. Okay, tap that on like seven, eight points around one round. Take a deep breath and see how you're feeling. And you, uh, I'm. 99% sure that you will feel some relief and this and sentence will writing. not be as strong. Yeah. And then keep writing, do the next sentence and tap on it again until the, the, re the resistance is there. And then you might not need even a page, but you might need five lines. Right. And then once you're finished with each of those pages that I forgot to mention, tear them out, rip them up and throw them away because you're done. Yeah, burn you, them, whatever. Burn them, yeah. You, you don't need or want them anymore. So anyway, that's uh, that's uh, some thoughts from us on, you know, some fresh ideas, I think, on making, uh, living intentionally, starting to um, create things and on affirmations, how you can leverage affirmations uh, on this. So, yeah. So we don't Good. have at this point our next one in the books. We'll probably chat after this, but I suspect we will be coming back with some more uh, Facebook lives to come. That will be wonderful, yes. 
Thank Let's you, Martin. Thank you, Robbie. What a joy. It's yes, always a indeed. Pleasure. All right. Have an amazing Bye. day, folks. Bye-bye. You too. Bye. And hello. Is it ending?